Hello, and welcome to another segment of the Temple of Love and Prayer International Ministries. And I'm none other, your host, Pastor Linda Jackson. And I want to praise and thank God for my husband, Pastor Barry Jackson, who's here in the studio behind the scenes with me. I want to thank every viewer who has been watching, who, and I pray that you have been getting something and learning something from the teachings that God has placed on my spirit to teach the people. We want to thank you for your encouraging words that when you see us, you encourage us. It means a great deal. There is a topic today. Matter of fact, there's four parts that I'm going to be ministering on. And it's the many functions of the Holy Spirit. And God had placed this on my heart several months ago, really heavy. And he had given this to me to minister about the many functions of the Holy Spirit. Because I think sometimes we can forget that he's more than just one thing. He's a lot of things in our lives that he wants to be in our lives. And so before I go any further with the, uh, the teaching and the scriptures, I just want to pray for you all. The Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your sweet tender mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for everyone that are hearing me at the sound of my voice. Father, we ask that you bless every household mightily. We thank you, Lord God, that you're giving your people an ear to hear and a heart to do and to change and minds to change. Father, I pray that every hearer, every viewer will surrender their lives, their hearts and their minds to your will. And we give you glory. God, have your way in this studio on today. Speak to me and through me. I give your name glory. And all the honor is yours. And it is so. I want you to turn with me to the book of Acts. Chapter 10. Um, I was going to start at verse 37. But I believe that we can uh, start at verse 38. Because we're talking about the many functions of the Holy Spirit. One of those functions is his power. There are so many people in different forms of religion who say they're Christians, but they have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I want to um, bring, to your, bring to your hearing and to your enlightenment that we need him. He is one of the third part of the Trinity. And we need everything that God has for us. We need it. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. Without it, we're just um, ordinary. We can't do the things that God called us to do in ministry. And so for every religion out there that says you don't need, you don't need all of that, you don't need the power, of the, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Even before you be baptized in water, water has its place, it symbolizes something. But when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, the heart needs to change. It's, a, it's, it's something that helps you to do what God has called you to do. That's the Holy Spirit. This is the power of the Holy Ghost. And just in case you think you don't need it, we're going to read some scriptures. I'm going to do a lot of scripture reading on today to show you that you do need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so in the books of Acts chapter 10, I'm going to just go straight to verse 38. And it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. This is our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Even Christ himself. Now, if you want to finish reading the, whole, the, the rest of the scripture, you can. But I'm just going to stop right here for a second. Even Jesus Christ needed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He was anointed by God himself to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And if Christ needed to be filled 
with the Holy Ghost, then how come you don't think that you need the power of the Holy Spirit? How come you think that because you're going to uh, Bible school, you are Thelonian and, and, and Bible education, you can, you can uh, disciple the Bible to a degree, I'm going to talk about why you need the Holy Spirit to even understand the scriptures, the deepness of the scriptures, the meat of the scriptures. You need that. You need the Holy Spirit for that. And just because you have, you can quote some scriptures, you still need the power. You need the forcefulness, the power, the supernatural power is what the Holy Ghost represents. And you're going to need him. To do the things that God wants you to do in this earth. Because there is a demonic force in the earth. A supernatural demonic force you can't see with your eyes. But it's at work causing people to do all kinds of evil. In order to turn from your wicked ways for one thing. In order for you to deal with the evil for one thing. You need a supernatural power to combat that evil power. And so that is being baptized with the Holy Ghost. Here you had God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that would oppress of the devil for God was with him. He was able to defeat the devil who was able to help those who were oppressed with the devil but he did it through the Holy Spirit. Even though he's God himself, he's letting us know in the earth, you need the Holy Ghost. You need supernatural power to defeat the enemy and to do ministry. The Holy Ghost power is the anointing. It is the oil that is on your life. And you need that to do the supernatural things of God. You even need the power of the Holy Spirit to preach and teach the gospel. And it's so reverent that you have the Holy Spirit because we can. We, the Bible is set up to where we can we can understand um, the general part of Scripture. But if you want to get the meat of God, you need the Holy Spirit to give you revelation and understanding because it was the same Holy Spirit that inspired holy men to write it. You're going to need that same Holy Spirit to give you revelation of what he inspired people, the holy men, to write. So even to, to, to preach and to teach the gospel, I don't go into scripture unless I'm praying and ask the Holy Spirit to guide me and lead me in it. Because then it's just my own intellect working and I'm not getting the fullness of what I need to get understanding so I can minister to people that they can get understanding and knowledge of what God is saying, what God is instructing in his word. So in order to preach and teach the gospel, if you are not baptized with it, you got all these religions, and I'm not going to even go out there and try to name any names. And just because you're doing some good stuff, and just because the religion is doing some good stuff, just because they're uh, feeding folk and they're, they, they're keeping the laws of the land and all that stuff, that's wonderful. But it is the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit that destroys the sinful yoke of our lives. We need his power to overcome the sinful nature of our lives. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to move in ministry, to change lives from, from what the devil has, has destroyed or is destroying and to help to uh, uh, to cast those demons out. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go into the book of Luke 4. Turn with me to, no, let's first go back to Acts. Because I'm going to read something where God said, Christ said, this is what we need. is the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's go to Acts 1. 
This is a familiar scripture for all men and women of God. And we're going to start at verse 5. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 5. And it says, For John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost many days from hence. And so this is Christ talking. Christ is letting his disciples know that before you do any ministry, before you go any further in what you're doing, you need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. John baptized with water. That's so well and good. But you need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not too many days for hence. And then in verse 8, and this is what I love. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. This is a supernatural power. The power that causes you to preach the gospel with fire and with understanding and knowledge to get into the deep words of God. This is the power that you need to cast out demons. This is the power where you can lay hands and the sick shall recover. This is that power of the Holy Ghost. Without it, we're just simply ordinary ministers. With the power of the Holy Ghost, we become extraordinary ministers in the gospel, preaching and teaching the word of God. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, and upon the uttermost part of the earth, everywhere you go. You need that power. You need that sustaining power that destroys sinful yokes. You need that sustaining power of the Holy Ghost. Wherever you go in the uttermost part of the earth, you need the Holy Ghost. You cannot live as a Christian without him. So those of you who said that you are a Christ follower, you are called after his name, you're going to need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. If you have not the, the, been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you need to cry out to Christ and say, baptize me into the Holy Ghost. I need to be baptized. I need to receive his power. His spirit needs to rest and abide in me. You need it to preach and teach the gospel. If you're out there doing anything for Christ and you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, you're not of Christ. Because that's not his instruction. He gave us Pacific instructions here in the books of Acts chapter 1. He gave us Pacific instructions. This is Jesus Christ saying. For John truly baptized with water. I'm in verse 5 chapter 1. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Why? In verse 8 he said because you need to receive the power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You will have the power. The supernatural power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You can't get it any other way. You can't, you can't receive the Holy Ghost. By paying for it. You can't receive it any other way. It has to come upon you. You have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That you may have the power. Of the Holy Ghost. That is significant. Even Christ needed to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. In the book of Luke 4, we're going to go in the book of Luke 4. It talks about, let's see what, uh, see Matthew, Mark. Turn to me in the book of Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 18. Book, uh, Luke chapter 4 verses 14 to 18. And Jesus returned into the return in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there he went out, a fame of him, through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all, all. And he came to Nazareth. Where he had been brought up. And as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. And stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him. The book of the prophet Elias. And when he had opened the book. He found the place where it was written. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now this is Christ is talking now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, which is the Holy Ghost, because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, those who have been captive by sin, the yoke and the bondage of sin, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set a liberty, to set at liberty them that are abused. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And in verse 14, he says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. There again, that power of the Holy Ghost. He had the power of the Holy Ghost. When he came back and returned back to these cities, Galilee, there he began to go into the synagogues and he taught. So he did not preach or teach the gospel without the power of the Holy Ghost. Christ needed to be anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost. God anointed him with the power of the Holy Ghost. He went back into Galilee. This time he returned, the Bible says, and, and, and um, Luke 4, verse 14, he returned. He went back into Galilee with the power of the Spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost. And in verse 18 and he went to all these other little towns. He went to Nazareth. And in verse 18, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel. And so even though those of you who are out here preaching gospel, saying you are Christian, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're out of the order of God. You're out of the will of Christ. And you need to stop doing it until you are baptized in the Holy Ghost because you're misleading a lot of people. It is through the Holy Ghost that teaches us how to preach and how to teach the gospel. There are so many people who is doing this and causing confusion with people because you're not led. This is a holy document. It's anointed and holy. And it was the Holy Ghost who inspired that same Holy Spirit, as I said before, taught holy men, inspired them to write it. And it's going to take him to, to teach us what he inspired others to write. And so if you have to preach and teach the gospel, if God called you to preach and teach the gospel, you need to do it with the Holy Spirit. Here in verse 18, he said that he even preached deliverance to the captives. Those who are bound in, in a sinful habit in their life. That's, that's a, a drug addict who's uh, sexual immorality. Um, those who are so bound by some kind of sinful nature. He preached deliverance. He didn't even have to lay on hands. He actually preached deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are abused through the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit. He was able to accomplish these things. It didn't say anything that he was laying on hands at that time. He spoke, he preached this. He preached deliverance with the power of God that people were delivered and set free from their sinful, sinful ways. Someone was, was delivered from smoking. Someone was delivered from being a drunken. Someone was delivered, delivered from being a fornicator. Many times that, that Christ had, 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 had um, spoke healing over to people and say, go and, and sin not. That's the spoken word. He's speaking deliverance in the lives of people. And didn't have to lay hands. That's what the power of the Holy Ghost would do. And so if you really want to make a difference in people's lives, you need the power of the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized in the power of the Holy Ghost. So please stop preaching and teaching the gospel because it's so significant. You're hurting people. You're hurting the souls of God's people. 
by giving them false truth. Well, it can't be truth, so it's falseness. Because you are not being led by the Holy Spirit. You don't have the power of God to be doing these things, and so you shouldn't be doing it. Amen. And in the book of 2 Corinthians, it says that here, I, you also need the power to fight evil. And so this is for, you know, anybody that is called by his name, that call yourself a Christian, and you're going through some stuff, and you're being um, attacked from the enemy, all different ways, financially, physically, our enemy is supernatural, and he has power. And so you need the power of the Holy Ghost to deal with that as well. So we're going to turn into the book of 2 Corinthians. And I'm going to show you this, why we need the power to fight evil. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. This is some good stuff. Let's start at verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10. And we're going to start at verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So our warfare, the problem is we're dealing, like I said, there's a supernatural power out here, which is demonic, which is the devil. We all know that he exists. Stop playing and saying that he don't because we all know it. Because you use hell and the devil and all kinds of uh, conversations that you have. So we know that the devil existed. And we know that nothing is good from him. So how do you deal with that? Men and women of God. Those of you who have not surrendered yourself to God to receive the Holy Ghost. How do you deal with with you walking around in this earth, walking around as Christians and being defeated by the devil and saying that you don't need the power of the Holy Ghost to defeat it. You need the power of the Holy Ghost to defeat the supernatural power of the devil. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Our warfare is not a physical fight. You cannot fight demonic spirits with a gun, a picket sign. You cannot fight it with a knife. You cannot do karate on it. You could yell, scream, fuss, and holler. The devil is just going to look at you and laugh. And continue to attack you and destroy you and, and what's close to you. We have been going through a lot of stuff in our communities. A lot of shootings, a lot of killings. All these things are demonic. Anything that has to do with murder is evil. It's demonic. And people been trying to fight this thing with picket signs. It's good to go to the politicians and try to make new laws, but demons don't care about your law. They don't care what's on the books. They ain't afraid of no prison because we can't put them in prison. You can't lock them up. God's got, that's God's thing. God's going to do that. But you can't lock up the devil. And so all what you're doing is it's, it's, it's just making you more frustrated and angry, bitter, hurt, pain building up, loved ones are dying, people getting shot and killed in the streets and sleeping in their beds. And the demons are out here to kill, steal, and destroy, period. They don't love you. They don't, they don't fear you. They don't care about uh, uh, who you are, how much money you have. They're here to kill, steal, and destroy you by any means necessary. And they're doing it. They want your life and your soul. And so you're out here fighting warfare. You're fighting demonic spirits with your flesh. God says, and people are crying out, God, and I know parents and fathers and mothers and siblings and husbands and wife are crying out to God. Why? 
What can we do to stop this? It's right here. You need the power. You, if you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost, you can't tear down Satan and his plan and his demons. You can't defeat that without the power of the Holy Ghost. Because he'll jack you up. Because you don't have any power to, to fight against his power. We're just ordinary folk. That's sinful. Our nature is sinful. And one thing Satan ain't going to do, he ain't going to cast out Satan. His, his, his army would not be divided against themselves. They would not divide themselves. They would not bring division in their army. Satan would not allow that. That would not happen. So he's not going to cast out demons because he like you. Because he don't. And the only way to defeat the army of Satan, to defeat the attacks of the enemy, God has given us something. Jesus Christ left this with us, gave us specific instructions before he ascended into heaven. He said, go until you receive the Holy Ghost because you need the power of the Holy Spirit. You shouldn't be doing ministry or anything that has to do with God without the power of his Holy Spirit. You cannot fight spiritual things with the natural things of life. You can't do it. It ain't going to work. That's why so many people getting killed and getting dead and everything. God has given us power to use. And that power is the Holy Spirit. And if we tap into the Holy Spirit power, we can tear down the enemy's plan to stop killing in our communities. That's the key. And verse 10, I mean, uh, chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We are in a spiritual warfare. We are in warfare. And it's a spiritual warfare. This is why... All of this evil is going up from the White House to the outhouse. It's a spiritual warfare. The devil is out here killing, stealing, and destroying lives and souls. Verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare.